Catholic History Trek, a podcast exploring the Catholic past. There's an all too common outcome from internet surfing, how one can jump on the internet to quickly look up one thing, only to discover that three hours later, they've looked up 20 things, but never that thing they initially set out to find. Sometimes, history can be like that. So many people and events in history are connected, and one thing can lead to something entirely different. For example, one day I was reading about Memento Mori, the Catholic spiritual practice of living well by remembering death. This led me to a fresco by Mizacho, and this 15th century fresco has a phrase on it, which is a similar phrase linked to a skull kept in a room by a member of the Confederation of Oratorians of Philip Neri. The Oratorian is Giovanni Giovanelli Ancina, who became the topic of this Catholic History Trek episode. I'm Scott Schulze, and I'll be making a solo trek without my cognoscenti co-host Kevin Schmeising as I cover the life of Giovanni Giovanelli Ancina and his connection to the Catholic practice of Memento Mori. Blessed Giovanni Giovanelli Ancina, also called John Giovanel Ancina, was born in 1545 at Fasano in Italy. It said his parents added the middle name Giovanelli for a 4th century bishop and confessor and thanksgiving for a miraculous cure of their son after seeking his intercession. Known by this middle name of Giovanelli, he was a remarkably bright student and earned a doctorate in both medicine and philosophy. Giovanelli had established his career as a doctor when one morning at a solemn mass celebrated by the Augustinians, that changed. During the Libra Me, a Latin chant meaning deliver me, which is a responsory sung in the office of the dead, upon hearing the words, Celu movendi sunt et terra, meaning the heavens and the earth shall be moved, he literally felt the heavens and earth move within him. At this moment, he realized the hardness of his heart and how far he was living away from God. As recorded in the 1891 book, The Life of the Blessed John Juvenal Ancina by Charles Henry Bowden, a priest of the Oratory of St. Philip Neri, he writes, This light of the Holy Ghost taught him the vanity of earthly things, and he resolved to leave the world and follow Christ. He renounced thenceforth all profane studies and all affections of this world. He gave himself up to the study of the sacred scriptures and sought to discover, both in prayer and spiritual reading, what matter of life it was that the will of God he should embrace. In 1578, both Giovanelli and his brother, Giovanni Matteo Ancina, entered the oratory of St. Philip Neri. In 1582, Giovanelli was ordained a priest and his brother Matteo a deacon. While at the oratory, Giovanelli was guided under St. Philip Neri. Neri, called the Apostle of Rome, was a late priestly vocation himself, spending 17 years as a layman in Rome before pursuing the priesthood. During that time, Neri received the miracle of his heart. While praying before the Holy Spirit, a globe of fire appeared and entered him, filling him with a fire of love. After his death, it was discovered that his heart had swelled in size and two of his ribs had been broken and curved around his now enlarged heart. He had a devotion to preaching and hearing confessions, and while we will cover more of the life of St. Philip Neri in a separate episode, I will add that after founding several apostolates, he eventually founded the Congregation of the Oratory in 1575, which Giovanelli entered. And it's said of all the oratorians, Giovanelli most closely imitated his spiritual master. At the oratory, in his scantily furnished room, Giovanelli kept a skull with the following Italian words written under it. And I will apologize in advance, I do not read Italian, I don't speak Italian, this may not be entirely accurate. O tuce guadian sua, an ha io fui come se tu. Tu sarai come son io, pensa a questo, ai vacandeo, which, translated to English, a language I know, means, Thou who lookest now on me, as thou art now, I once have been. As I am now, thou soon wilt be. Think upon this, and walk with God. 
While keeping a skull is one of his few possessions may seem morbid, it is associated with the Catholic spiritual practice of memento mori, Latin for remembered death. It is a practice in which men and women seeking holiness would utilize something such as a skull to remind them of their own mortality and the brevity of this life to assist them in keeping their focus on God and on the eternal. Some of the many saints who kept skulls and are depicted with skulls in artwork include St. Jerome, St. Gerard, and St. Francis of Assisi, amongst many others. As God said to Adam, as recorded in Genesis chapter 3 verse 19, For thou art dust, and into dust thou shalt return. From the Third Plenary Council of Baltimore, we have the 1891 Baltimore Catechism. It is composed in a question and answer format, proposing questions and providing answers to these questions. In Catechism number 3, Lesson 37, Question 1371 asks, When will Christ judge us? And the Catechism answers, Christ will judge us immediately after our death and on the last day. To be ready for this judgment, Giovanelli kept the skull and the phrase written below it. This phrase, which he had written below the skull, is similar to the Latin phrase, Fui quad es, eris quad sum, meaning, I was what you are, you will be what I am. This wording was not invented by Giovanelli, but was copied by him. An interesting example of its previous use shows up in a fresco by Masaccio, titled Holy Trinity, painted in the late 1420s in the church of the Santa Maria Novella in Florence, Italy. The upper two-thirds of this Holy Trinity fresco features a chapel interior with God the Father, the Crucified Son, and the Holy Spirit, flanked by St. Mary, St. John, and the donors of the work. The lower third features a skeleton and a crypt, upon which is written the line, I was what you are, you will be what I am. Interestingly, the Holy Trinity, the painting, not God, disappeared. In 1586, while renovations at Santa Maria Novella were undertaken, which included redecorating the altar, a new altar and screen were placed in front of the Holy Trinity fresco. It wasn't until almost three centuries later in 1860, when the newer altar was dismantled during renovations of the chapel, that Masaccio's Holy Trinity was discovered. Although, somehow, only this upper two-thirds portion of the fresco was discovered. It was moved and restored. Meanwhile, the lower portion, with the wording similar to Giovanelli's skull, remained undiscovered until the 20th century when it was restored and reunited with the upper portion in the 1950s. Giovanelli's life was a faithful embodiment of the memento mori disposition. He lived a life of simplicity and austerities, eschewing the world's trifles as often as possible. He became known for his preaching and teaching, focusing on the three aspects of Philip Neri's oratory, prayer, preaching, and the sacraments. As a confessor, testimonies reveal that he was similar to Padre Pio, that he could pierce into the soul of the penitent and draw from them hidden or forgotten sins, which were mystically made known to this holy priest. This is a gift which Philip Neri was also said to possess. Philip Neri would say, Amare Nashiri, meaning love to be unknown, which seemed to be an ideal which Giovanelli fully embraced in 1596 when Pope Clement VIII had to fill three vacant episcopal sees. Basically, he was looking for three men to name bishop. Giovanelli was on the Pope's short list of candidates, to which he fled into the hills of Italy, seeking to remain a simple oratorian priest. But his solitude was short-lived. Six years later, in 1602, he was called to Rome and named a bishop. Seeking to avoid the appointment, he attempted in vain to prove his unworthiness for the episcopal office. But the Pope ordered him to accept an assignment as Bishop of Saluzzo. This diocese is on the far northwest edge of Italy, bordering France and near Switzerland, and it was considered the Italian diocese most infiltrated by heretics. As bishop, Giovanelli instituted a diocesan seminary, the use of a written catechism, made pastoral visits of his diocese, and reached out to heretics. One such example includes the conversion of John Calvin's grandson back to the true faith, after which this grandson became a Carmelite. 
the simplicity and austerities practiced by Giovanelli as a simple oratorian were carried into his tenure as Bishop of Saluzzo. Save for the one luxury of an extensive library, he lived a very austere life for a bishop. Within two years of becoming Bishop of Saluzzo, he was murdered by poisoning. Giovanelli had rebuked a dissolute monk for conducting an affair with a nun. This monk apparently offered him a glass of wine as a sign of reconciliation, but this monk had poisoned the wine, which accomplished the desired effect of killing the holy bishop. In 1890, Giovanni Giovanelli Ancina was beatified by Pope Leo XIII. Blessed Giovanni Giovanelli Ancina lived the memento mori words written below the skull he kept in his room, Thou who lookest now on me, as thou art now I once have been, as I am now thou soon wilt be, think upon this and walk with God. When he joined the Oratorians and was ordained a priest, the language he would have used would have been the church's historic language of Latin. And it is with this language that Kevin and I end our Catholic History Trek episodes with the glory be prayed in Latin. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, Sicuturat in principio et nunc et semper et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Thank you for listening to Catholic History Trek. You can reach us at catholichistorytrek at gmail.com.